text tonight is called stinking thinking. Amen? How many of you know when we come under attack that the devil, where his point of attack is at our minds? Why is that? It's because the battleground is in the mind. And you know, so few people get a hold of that. You know, but that's where the battleground is at, is between our ears. Well, you see, the unrenewed mind is always, always waging war against unbelief. Continually waging war against unbelief. Ever praying for faith, but never arriving. Always praying for faith, but never arriving. Well, why is that? Well, my dear people, it's because of stinking thinking. Always talking unbelief, yet struggling to get faith. Ever confessing failure, but at the same time confessing faith in the Word and denying it in their actions. Stinking thinking. Trying to believe, yet never acting on the Word. Well, you say, well, Ron, so what's going on there? Well, they have been captured by stinking thinking. Captured by the mind. You know, <clears throat> when we're born again, there's a great enthusiasm and a great joy that comes upon us, uh, and it comes at the new birth. However, unless that is cared for and fed by the mind, being renewed through feeding on the Word and then practicing it. That joy soon dies out. And what you end up with is a dead church. You ever, how a dead, you ever wonder how come a dead church ends up being a dead church? It's very simple. <coughs> because of stinking thinking. In other words, of re because of unrenewed minds. Now, let me explain to you a little bit about, the, about, the, about how God created us. And maybe this will help you this evening. First of all, we are a spirit, a soul, and a body. <clears throat> we are a spirit, a soul, and a body. Now, when we're born again, our spirit man is born again instantaneously. We are a brand new creation. Instantaneously. All right. But then, of course, we live in a body, don't we? We live in this body. And, of course, it dies and then is glorified at the resurrection. But our soul, we're spirit, soul, and body. Our soul is what? It's our mind. And that's where the battle's at. That's the battleground. Our soul is our mind. So consequently, it is not instantly born again. It is not instantly born again, nor is it glorified at the resurrection. Okay? In other words, it has to be renewed to the Word of God. <clears throat> it has to be renewed to the Word of God. So what happens is, if our minds are not renewed to the Word of God, then we suffer from stinking thinking. You still with me? All right. <clears throat> However, when we are born again, our spirit man is a new creation. It has just been born again. Everybody still with me? Okay. But the mind that has held our spirit in captivity is still the same old mind. You still with me? I'll say it again. But the mind that has held our spirit in captivity prior to being born again is the same same old mind. And so consequently, what happens is it becomes the battleground. It becomes the battleground. For who? For the enemy. It becomes the battleground for who? For the enemy. And he tries to overcome us uh, through the flesh, through old habits, and through old strongholds. This is why it is so important that believers sit under the Word of God so that their minds can be renewed. Consequently, they in turn become disciples of the Lord. 
What you're seeing out here, when you turn on the news, you see a starving world. You see Somalia, you see uh, Ethiopia, you see all these uh, different nations all over the world. They're starving in the natural. They're starving of food. But my dear people, that is a manifestation of what's going on in the spirit. How many of you know that things happen in the spirit first? There's your manifestation. People are starved to death in their spirit. In other words, they are not getting the word of God. What happens? They're starving in the natural. Now, if you turn with me, please, to Romans 12. Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> I believe this will really help you tonight. I'm going to try to be slow, methodic. I want you to get a hold of it. If you don't get a hold of it, get the tape. Amen? I am making a tape. Chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren... Now, who's Paul the Apostle talking to here? He's talking to us. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye... Who? Us. He's talking to us, is he not? He's pointing directly, talking to us. And he says that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, Unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. <clears throat> what? That's right. It's just, as far as God's concerned, that is just our reasonable service. Not a, that's not even a call beyond duty. That is our reasonable service that we do what? That we present our bodies a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Then verse 2 it says, And be not conformed to this world... But be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, why? So that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you see, my dear people, the spirit man is created, in other words, born again, but the mind, but the mind, my dear people, this brain of ours that receives its knowledge from the five senses. What is the five senses? What we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we feel and touch. It's the flesh. Flesh. How many of you know that the flesh is your enemy? Huh? Your flesh is your enemy. Okay. So the spirit man is recreated. In other words, it's born again. But the mind, this brain of ours that receives its knowledge from these five senses, or in other words, from what I've called sense knowledge, or from the flesh, can be brought into obedience to the Word of God. We have learned from what we see, what we hear, what we feel, what we taste, what we smell. That's how we've learned. We've learned through sense knowledge. In other words, we've learned all of our lives prior to being born again through our flesh. That's the reason why after we're born again and uh, God wants us to do something, our flesh just screams. I don't want to do that. Doesn't it? Doesn't it scream? Well, huh? You ever see a 40-year-old 40, a 40 man stomping his feet? Huh? That's right. The car, why? Because it don't want to do it. You see? Why? It's because these five channels, or in other words, the flesh, have learned from and have been taught our minds all that it knows. That's how we've learned. Now, I want you to notice there in verse 1 of Revelation 12. I'm sorry, Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, you see what God's saying there? He's speaking to us, and He's saying, present your bodies, present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Who? Us. So, what is the Lord saying? He is saying, I want you... I want you to give this home of our senses, this flesh of ours, to the Lord. 
Isn't that what he's saying? When he's saying, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, he's saying, I want you to give this house of ours, of our senses or our flesh, to the Lord. In other words, I want you to lay that body of yours up on the altar. You say, well, how do you do that? To your stinking thinking. You see that? You say, well, now wait a minute. Okay, I'm explaining to you this way. As the Jew in Israel in the days of the sacrifice, as the Jew laid a dead offering up on the altar... What was that dead offering? It was flesh. Flesh of an animal. As a Jew laid a dead offering up on the altar, my dear people, we are to lay our living flesh up on the altar. Dedicating it, giving it over to the Lordship of the Word of God. That's how you end up serving Jesus Christ. Why? Because the Word is Master. Then He becomes our Master. He becomes the Lord in our lives. He becomes the Lordship in our lives. In other words, is Jesus the Lord of your life? You see, if He's not, then you need to take some of the stinking thinking, or some of the stinking flesh, I call it, and put it up on the altar and die to it. You see what I'm talking about? You say, well, Ron, how come this is all coming out? Because God's getting ready to move and He's going to move mighty. But He cannot move through flesh. Did you hear me? He cannot move through flesh. I says, God, what are you trying to show me? And he says, you may get down to two people in here, but he says, I'm going to move. Did you hear me? He says, you may get down to to two people in here, but he says, I'm going to move, and that's going to move mighty. But there can be no flesh. Strong, isn't it? But that's exactly what he's saying to us. Now, what you notice in verse 2 of Romans 12, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, my dear people, First of all, the Lord is saying here, be not conformed to this world. What is this world represented by? Flesh. Isn't it? You turn on the TV, what do you see? You see flesh city. Don't you? Flesh city. So he he says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Be ye transformed. Well, how do we do that? Very simple, says right there. By the renewing of your mind. How? By the renewing of your mind. Why? Then here it comes, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. My dear people, how do you prove what is the good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God? How do you prove it? You walk in the Spirit. You don't walk in the flesh. God's moving flesh out, my people. He's moving flesh out. Why? So that the, the believer can begin to walk in the, the, uh, the good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Not only walk in it, but prove it. How do you prove it? <laughs> you lay hands on the sick and they recover. You cast out devils. You raise people up out of wheelchairs. That's how you prove what God's will is, isn't it? Think about it. But you see, my dear people, He, uh, God Almighty cannot move through the flesh. The flesh has got to go. The flesh has got to go. And you say, oh my God, how am I going to do that? My flesh is already screaming. Don't worry, it can scream. <coughs> this preacher can tell you it can scream. <laughs> uh-huh. It can scream and scream loud. You better believe it. You see, my dear people, our minds, our minds, must come under the, the, the dominion of our spirit man so that the Holy Spirit can have His way. 
The Holy Spirit has got to become, rise up and dominate the flesh instead of the flesh dominating the spirit man. In other words, it's like this, if you notice, uh, in your lives, in all of our lives. It goes like this, back and forth. The Holy Spirit's up here, and then the flesh is up here. The Holy Spirit's here, and the flesh is up here. It's back and forth like a seesaw. Huh? I can almost look at you and tell what day of the week it is. Here's Sunday, the Spirit's up here. Huh? Saturday night, it's, way, it's the other way around. Huh? You see? Well... You see, <clears throat> that's the reason why the Lord wants us to come, uh, the Word, to dominate our, uh, our spirit man through the Word of God. And how do we do that? By renewing of our mind to the Word of God. You say, well, how do I renew my mind to the Word of God? You're going to find out here real quick, my dear people. And it's more than just reading it. It's more than just meditating in it. Much more. God's going to move, people. He's going to move. Then we will know how and what. In other words, we will know what the threefold uh, will of God is. The good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God for our lives and for those around us. Because we'll be walking in the Spirit. Our minds are renewed. Now, I want you to turn with me, please, to Ephesians chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Let me back up here. Verse 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by Jesus as the truth is in Jesus, that ye... Who's he talking to here? That's right. Paul the Apostle talking to us. And he says, That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Which is what? Corrupt. Did you see that? Corrupt. According to the deceitful lusts. And... Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Well, first of all, we are a new creation. How many of you know that? Say that with me. I am a new creation. I am a new creation. Okay. And we are to put on the new man. Put that, say that. We are to put on the new man. Okay. So we are to put on the new man that is being renewed in knowledge, which is the Word of God, after the image of Him. So you see, God wants the new man. Who's the new man? That's us. He wants Him to be brought into perfect harmony with our minds to the Word of God, which is a renewing of the mind. In other words, God's, what's God saying? He says, hey, people, get rid of this stinking thinking. Get rid of this stinking thinking. <clears throat> I said, Lord, that's kind of an odd name for that text. He says, yeah, but he says, you know what? They won't forget it. <laughs> How many of you know God's smarter than we are? Huh? He says, they won't forget that. You know, every time they open their mouth, they'll, oh, that's that stinking thinking. Isn't it? Huh? See? Thank you, Father. <laughs> you see, my dear people, a small faith man, a small faith man is almost always a man whose mind has not been renewed to the Word of God. A believer that does not walk in love, it is because his mind has not been, yet been renewed to the Word of God. It's true. They are still following their flesh, the senses. Their flesh. Their stinking thinking. Still following it. And you can read it just like picking up a book. You see, my dear people, our mind cannot be renewed by simply reading or studying the Bible. You say, well, what do you mean? <clears throat> I sit and read the Word all the time. What do you mean it can't be uh, renewed or it can't be uh, 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 
uh, just, or just by simply studying in the Bible. Well, I'll give you a perfect example, my dear people. You know, I know a lot of, a lot of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, religious leaders that went to seminaries and theological seminaries and the whole lot of everything else. You know what? They can read that Bible frontwards and backwards. But I'll tell you what, they can bite nails and spit them out at you too. True? Sure. Yeah. Hard. You see, <clears throat> you say, so what is the key? What is the key? What's the Holy Spirit saying tonight? My dear people, you have to live it. Mm-hmm. There's one thing standing up here preaching about love. It's something else doing it. See? You have to do it. You have to live it, my dear people. You talk about love, you preach love, then you do love. Huh? We have to live it, my dear people. It has to become a part of our minds. It has to become a part of our daily lives. And that's what God's talking about when He's talking about, okay, you've got to get rid of that stinking thinking. You've got to get rid of this flesh and become what I want you to be so that you'll know what the good, the perfect, and the, and the, and the uh, of my will so I can move, I can move through you. Amen. My dear people, He wants to move through everybody in this room. He wants to move through everybody in this room. And the only person that stops Him is us. Through stinking thinking. Isn't it true? If you don't think so, I want you all to get a tape recorder and just tie it around your neck for one day. Huh? You see what I'm talking about? Huh? Let me ask you something. If I if I loaned you a tape recorder, I'll loan you this, huh? And let you wear it all week. Would you let us come back here and sit on the table and play it? Huh? You say, well, ah, ah. well, maybe I better preach this again next week. <laughs> Amen. You see? Huh? The Lord wants us to wake up. Wake up. My dear people, I'm telling you, I've been saying this going on a year. Well, it is a year. Going on a year. He's going to use the people. He's going to use you. He's going to use you. He's going to use you. But you've got to listen to the Lord and be willing to be used. Yes, there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. Well, <clears throat> Hallelujah. You know the word God says in 2 Corinthians 4.16, For which cause we faint not, but though, but through our, uh, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed, how? Day by day. Day by day. How? By renewing of the mind and then acting on the word. He said, well, wait a minute. Ah, I don't know if I can live. I don't know if I can love that guy that lives next door. <laughs> Not him. How about the guy on the other side? <laughs> huh? Huh? I've been living. This, you know, but Ron, I live in a semi, and this guy's been on the other side of that wall for forty-five years. <laughs> huh? I haven't spoke to him for forty of it. You see what I'm saying? We have to live it, people. And God says it's not hard. Why? It's not hard. Why? you got the Holy Ghost in you. Amen. He fights your battle. But you have to open your mouth. Amen. You have to do something. You see? So, the inward man is our spirit man. The inward man is our spirit man. And that spirit man is feeding on the Word of God and it is being renewed day by day, day by day. And day by day he becomes stronger and a little stronger and a little stronger to where he can override... The flesh. Think about it. Think about it. Let me give you an example. Let's say, here's this nice little clock, okay? And I'm, I'm down in the a, in a high street, and I walk into Boots, okay? And I see that nice little clock sitting there. Well, what keeps me from just picking that nice little clock up, sticking it in my pocket? What, what, what causes? You know, what keeps me from picking that nice little clock up, sitting there on boots? Because boy, it's a nice clock. Oh. Huh? Why? Because my my mind, my mind is renewed to the Word of God. Thou shalt not steal. Okay. Now that's a very simple illustration. But what the Lord wants us to do is that Holy Spirit has to rise up. The Holy Spirit rises up in us to the point 
that anything that comes along, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. Uh, I've overcome you, devil, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. By His stripes I am healed. You see? Same reaction. In other words, when something happens, the Spirit takes over and controls the five senses. That's how you walk in the Spirit. That's how you walk in the Spirit. Amen. Everybody got that now? Huh? Okay. <clears throat> okay, praise God, Harry. Next time you see that clock, don't pick it up. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So you see, my dear people, it's like this. If we don't eat regularly, every day, just natural food, what happens? We begin to lose weight, don't we? And eventually, we become emaciated or malnourished. Just from, you know, if we don't eat breakfast and dinner and supper. All right. And then what happens? We can die if we don't eat any natural food. Well, the same is very, very true with spiritual food. The same is so, so true with spiritual food. The Word of God, in other words, uh, uh, if we don't eat the spiritual food continually, our spirit man becomes malnourished. He becomes malnourished from lack of spiritual food and can, in fact, this may sound strange to you, die. Die to the sense that he, he can't do anything. You see? He can't do anything. You've never educated him. You've never taught him anything. Okay? So, what you see here is, this is what you see when you, you see a, a, a dead church or when you see a, a dead congregation. You see a... a uh, you see a church that does not exhibit any spiritual zeal. What's happened? Well, through stinking thinking, the church is dead. It's died. It's malnourished. You see? You know, I have, uh, I have seen people come out of churches <coughs> deader, deader than they went in. <laughs> have we? I've seen people come out of churches deader than they went in. Why? Because they were not getting fed the Word of God. This is why it's so, so uh, important to set under the Word of God. You see, we are to meditate in the Word of God and we are to renew our minds to the Word of God. You say, well, why is that? Why is that? Because, my dear people, we are in a battle every day of the week. That's right. We are in a battle every day of the week. I'm going to show you an example here. Uh, turn with me, please, to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. How many of you know that we are the Joshua generation? Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We are the Joshua generation. Thank you, Jesus. Book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1. Everybody got it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying... Now, if you notice there in verse 2, that very first sentence, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses, uh, my servant, uh, is dead. Do you see that right there? I want you to underline that. Because you see, Moses represents there the old life. It represents the old life. And my dear people, how many of you know that, that if you're born again, the old, old life is dead? Amen. Moses is dead, my dear people. You're not under law anymore. Moses represented law. You're not under law anymore. You are under grace. You are under grace. Moses is dead. You have a new life. We are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Okay. Mo